Yesterday, we started our new experiment, taking a look at all of Elon's posts on X over the last 24 hours. And I asked the question, what do you think about this idea? And I had some mixed reviews, mixed comments, but most of the folks were saying, yeah, this is great, love it. Because why? Because nobody has time to go looking 15 times a day to see what Elon's posting, or you don't think to do it. And so you miss the entire day. And believe me, this train of thought that Elon is on on each day with regard to X um, is indicative of where he's headed and could impact some of the decisions you make with regard to buying the stock, selling the stock, um, and or just your overall impressions of where things are going in the world, because let's face it, he's a major world leader at this point. Um, also, I'd love to hear as you contemplate some of the thoughts today, which of these are crazy? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> Where is he completely off base? People are calling him a right winger and, you know, this and that and the other. I'm just curious, which one of these things really makes no sense? I'd love to be able to just hear from you as to which one of these seem really not quite right. But anyway, let's get right into it. By the way, you can hit the like button now or later. That would be really helpful. Subscribe. That'd be fantastic. Uh, hit notify because, you know, we got lots of other stuff going on all day. Uh, Jeff Lutz coming on later today. You've got uh, Scott Walter coming on later today. You've got stuff all week long. This makes four programs a day that we're doing. <laughs> yeah, okay. I know I'm nuts. All right, here we go. Let's go right into it. Breaking. This is from Mario Newfall. He says, breaking the Brazilian government committee officially praises Elon for exposing censorship. The Public Security Committee of the Chamber of Deputies approved a motion of applause and praise for Musk for exposing and facing political and unfounded censorship imposed by Brazilian justice against the users of the X platform in the country. And then, um, uh, and, and so Elon had... Uh, what do you call it, um, reposted that from Mario. It said, uh, then it went on to read, then we go on to something about NPR. This is from I slash O. Read this. NPR veteran describes the transformation of NPR from a news to an activist organization after Trump's election. During most of my tenure at NPR, an open-minded, curious culture prevailed. We were nerdy, but not knee-jerk activists or scolding. And uh, in recent years, however, that has changed. Today, those who listen to NPR or read his coverage online find something different that is still worldview of a very small pet segment of the U.S. population. Like many unfortunate things, the rise of advocacy took off with Donald Trump. As in many newsrooms, his election in 2016 was greeted at NPR with a mixture of disbelief, anger, and despair. But what began as tough, straightforward coverage of a belligerent, truth-impaired president veered towards efforts to damage or topple Trump's presidency. Persistent rumors that the Trump campaign colluded with Russia over the election became the catnip that drove reporting. At NPR, we hitched our wagon to Trump's most visible antagonist, Representative Adam Schiff. The Schiff talking points became the drumbeat of NPR reports. But when the Mueller report found no credible evidence of collusion, NPR's coverage was notably sparse. Russiagate quietly faded from our programming. It's bad to blow a big story. What's worse is to pretend it never happened, to move on with no mea culpa, no self-reflection. Hunter Biden's laptop story was noteworthy, newsworthy, but the timeless journalistic instinct of following a hot story became squelched. During the meeting with colleagues, I listened as NPR's best and most fair-minded journalist said it was good we weren't following the laptop story because it could help Trump. Over the course of the pandemic, a number of investigative journalists made compelling, if not conclusive, cases for the lab leak. But at NPR, we weren't about to swivel or even tiptoe away from the insistence with which we backed the natural origin story. Our news director declared that diversity on our staff and in our audience was the overriding mission. Race and identity became paramount in nearly every aspect of the workplace. Journalists were, were required to ask everyone we interviewed their race, gender, and ethnicity, among other questions, and had to enter it into centralized tracking system. We were giving unconscious bias training sessions. I'm sorry, we were giving, yes, unconscious bias training sessions. A growing DEI staff offered regular meetings, imploring us to start talking about race. There was an unspoken spoken consensus about the stories we should pursue and how they should be framed. It's frictionless, one story after another about instances of supposed racism, transphobia, signs of the cli climate apocalypse, Israel doing something bad, and the dire threat of Republican policies. It's almost like an assembly line. 
That mindset prevails in choices about language. In a document called NPR Transgender Coverage Guides, disseminated to news management, we were asked to avoid the term biological sex. The mindset animates bizarre stories on how the Beatles and bird names are racially problem uh, that the Beatles, the, the rock group, and the bird names are racially prob problematic, and others that are alarmingly divisive. Justifying looting with claims about the fears of crime are racist, and suggestions that Asian Americans who oppose affirmative action have been manipulated by white conservatives. More recently, we've been approaching the Israeli. Hamas war and its spillover into the streets and into campuses through the intersectional lens that has jumped from the faculty lounge to newsrooms, oppressor versus oppressed. I look at voter registration for our newsroom in DC where NPR is headquartered and many of us live. I found 87% registered Democrats working in editorial positions and zero Republicans, none. To which Elon responds, accurate. And then later on in another post, uh, he says uh, that... Uh, uh, what happened here? Uh-oh. Later on, he says they need a complete restructuring at NPR. Um, okay, then we have, uh, yeah, something got screwed up. You Sorry, sorry, sorry. I thought I got rid of all of that. Very sorry. Okay, replying. Um, this was uh, from Still Gray uh, on X. He says, you can't save democracy by being a tyrant. A certain quote by a certain German philosopher comes to mind, something about fighting monsters. Not to mention the fact that Alexandre de Moraes is unelected and was appointed to his position under suspicious circumstances by a man who owed him many favors. This is, of course, about Brazil. Elon responds to that by saying, exactly, it's absurd to claim that tyranny is necessary to save democracy. This from Libs of TikTok. She says, just imagine the media's reaction if this was Ivanka, Ivanka's story, diary. You barely hear about this from the media. Of course, they're referring to the fact that there are portions of Ivanka's diary which talk about uh, inappropriate uh, advances or inappropriate actions that our current uh, POTUS took with regard to his young female uh, daughters uh, in the shower as well as later on in some kind of uh, to, to being way too familiar. These are in the diary, and people are saying this would be, of course, front page news if it was Trump. Uh, Elon Musk replies to that, and he says, the legacy media, with notable exceptions, is almost entirely a Democratic Party propaganda machine. Then we have this short video. You might want to look at this. If, you, if you're on X, you can go back and go, go to Elon Musk's uh, thread and find this video. Stephen Jobs points out that there is a disease he said that took over at uh, at uh, Apple after he left. And he said that some people have this feeling that the idea, having the idea, having a really good idea is 90% of the work. But he says, no, the real work starts at, right at that point. The uh, amount of time and energy and, and the persistence and the raising of the funds and everything else that goes along after that is where the real hard work is. Elon responded to that precisely. Then this from Starlink says a reliable, oh, this is a repost by Elon. Reliable high-speed high internet for space stations in orbit and uh, the, the announcing Haven 1 to be the world's first commercial space station connected by SpaceX Starlink and gives a link. And that was a repost by Elon. So then is, this is another one from Mario Nafal, N-A-W-F-A-L, Nafal. He says, Tulsi Gabbard, this is Tulsi Gabbard speaking, Democrats accuse Elon of election interference because he doesn't censor their enemies. It's, she, the quote, it's not at all a stretch of the imagination to say X could be the next platform that the executive branch decides cannot be allowed to exist. We've seen this already with accusations that X is interfering in our elections. It's ironic that it's coming from the Democratic Party, that they're claiming that this guy, that this about a guy that is not allowing the federal government to manipulate his platform by deeming which accounts are okay and which not, which are not. And Elon says, no one on the left, this is Elon's response, no one on the left has ever been censored on this program platform as that has been censored on this platform. They were never censored. Now, I think that's probably not 100% true, but he probably should have said, like seven people have been censored from the left. We have simply, we are simply right now. What we're doing is basically what is that we have simply allowed the other half of the country to have a voice 
two. This is from Nicholas underscore DM. This was my speech at United Nations headquarters where I had the opportunity to tell the world what is actually happening in Brazil. Since then, the justice has ordered an investigation against me and most and the most voted debt who he is the most voted deputy in the country only for saying that Lula is corrupt and should be in jail. Elon says, brave man. All right. Then we have this from Ted Cruz. The precedent is crystal clear. The Senate has a duty to put Mayorkas on trial. Well, of course, the, the uh, House of Representatives has forwarded their impeachment, uh, uh, um, letters of impeachment to the Senate. And basically, uh, Ted Cruz is saying they now have a duty to do something. And then he goes on to say Chuck Schumer's plan to table the articles of impeachment violate Senate rules and the Constitution. Elon responds with a simple yes. Then we have this from uh, Edward uh, underscore Girao, G-I-R-A-O. And he is an edu from anyway. <laughs> this is another one, I think. Uh, this is from Brazil again. Heartfelt thanks for championing free speech in Brazil. Exciting news. As senators, we've greenlit a public hearing via our security committee and they would be honored to have you and Mr. Schellenberger uh, come uh, uh, to uh, speak about the Twitter file scandals exposing, pol political, exposing political censorship in our country, even virtually. If you're in, we'll reach out to coordinate. Elon says, you are most welcome. Then he retweets this about SpaceX. Falcon 9 launches 23 satellites to low Earth orbit from Florida. Then he also... Uh, response to this from Starlink, when you walk aboard an Air Baltic flight that ha that is equipped with Starlink, the internet will just work. And he responds, with Starlink, it feels like you're on the ground rather than in the air. He's assuming meaning with regard to your with your regard to your connection. Uh, this is a breaking from CB underscore Doge, D-O-G-E, D-O-G-E. He's breaking a re uh, X recorded a 43.4 million increase in unique visitors in March as compared to the previous month with a total of 1.6 billion unique visitors. Uh, that was retweeted by Elon. Uh, this is from Global Affairs. That's the name of the account, at Global Affairs on X. At the heart of our debate is our belief that some of the court orders we've received are not in line with the Marco Civil law are the Brazilian federal constitution. People should know why their account is blocked on X, of course, is what he's talking about, or why they are being investigated and given due process to defend themselves in public court. We believe this right is guaranteed by Marco civil law and the Brazilian federal constitution. The secrecy around the process is damaging to trust in public institutions. We have filed many appeals, some of which have been pending for more than a year. Not hearing these appeals is a violation of due process. We call on the court to lift the secrecy orders without delay to hear our appeals and for the other branches of the Republic to make every effort within their respective jurisdictions to demand the transparency essential in a thriving democracy. And Elon Musk responds. He says, look, X respects the laws of Brazil and all countries in which we operate. When given an order to break the law, we must refuse. So give us, give us a... Tell us to censor somebody within the law is basically what he's saying. But if you tell us to censor somebody and it's not within the law of your country, then that's just some official doing something inappropriate as what happened with the X-Files. Okay, then we have this from T-R-H-L official. T-R-H-L official. Banning X accounts with no due process violates sections 8, 9, 17, 27, and 36 under Title II of the fundamental rights and guarantees of the individual and collective under Brazil's constitution, Elon says, exactly. And then the very final one of the day is Elon says he's looking forward to meeting with Prime Minister Modi in India. So that which some people have been calling a rumor that he was going to India later this month, he now has made it official. All right, so as I said earlier, uh, please like if that's useful for you. Please comment below if I should continue doing this. Obviously, it takes time and energy. And if you don't like it, if you hate it, if you think it's stupid, let me know that too, <laughs> because I've got plenty going on. But I really felt like this would be something that would give everybody like in 15 or 20 minutes, boom, you've got the whole day 
of what Elon Musk has got on his mind. Hit like, please, subscribe, notify, all those things. And I'm going to put a card up here to uh, remind you to go back and take a look at this morning's um, After the Bell, because actually there was a lot of good stuff in that After the Bell, and it didn't get very many views. So I'll put the card up right here. Okay, it's been great talking to you.